Okay. Now let's have a look at one of our other lab rooms, the Control Automation and Robotics Laboratory. Now first thing you can see here is that these tables are all nice and clean and cleared off. That's only because yesterday the ITS department came in here and took out all of our computers um, for preparation to move to the new building over the summer. And I can show you a few pictures here of what it looked like when the computers were in place. And there are these computers right here. These are still here, but these are just standalone systems for um, computer networking and stuff. We had a networking course this past semester, so we got some switches and servers and things uh, for just hooking up and making computers talk to each other. I'll just show you around a bunch of other cool stuff we got here. We have these robot arms, and I should also mention that there is a lot of obsolete stuff that hasn't been used in years and I should have gotten rid of it years ago but I've either been too lazy or too busy with other stuff to get rid of anything like these AT&T terminals here. Um, they are really nice though. If you turn them on they have a nice nice yellow phosphor on the CRT and they used to be used a little more often for computer networking before all that other stuff was used. Anyway it's things like this that I would have to send to the salvage and surplus department at University Park and only there would they either recycle it or resell it if it has any resale value. And let's come back to these robot arms here. We got these nice RM Mitsubishi RM501, a couple of these robots and a bunch of other robots here. The Scala or Scara I think is the term for this thing which swivels, swings back and forth like that. And then there's these other robot arms here. Really, really awesome, really badass. But again, these used to be used for a robot course years ago and hasn't been, these robots haven't been used since, probably because the, the teacher who purchased these in the first place and used them in his coursework, he has since retired and moved on and left us with all these robots that nobody really knows how to use and um, still got all the these motor driver all these individual ports one port for each individual motor here it's from Rhino Robotics and then there's these turntables here little slots for aluminum cubes to go down and things, you know, just a bunch of little exercise work for these robots to, to simulate um, in a manufacturing environment. We got these conveyor belts here and these little control panels. But really one of the big reasons we don't use them anymore is because the software is still on five and a quarter floppies. That's how old they are. Now I did have one of my lab assistants a couple years ago go through all the software, even, even got an old computer out and put a five and a quarter inch drive in it so he could see, you know, what if anything was still working, look at the manuals and stuff here and try to hook up some of these robots to the control boxes and basically we found that they're they're really not usable. Most of these robots have at least one problem wrong, like one motor that doesn't work, or in the case of these two Mitsubishi robots, one of these two control boxes doesn't work at all. I think because it's missing some, some circuit boards or something inside. So again, these are something I would be getting rid of soon. Up here we have still in boxes for the Amateur Radio Club. They recently bought a whole bunch of stuff. So they'll be setting things up once we get things going and moving around here in the summertime. We can get these things unpacked and set up and hopefully get some antennas installed on the top of the building because this Amateur Radio Club is newly formed in only the past year. Let's have a look in some of these other cabinets. We got... Uh, Analog scopes, mostly Tektronix 2213. Got a couple of 2205s in there as well. 
And this cabinet here, the Altera computer cabinet. You got just, just an old computer in here. It's, it's only used for programming PIC, Altera PIC microcontrollers for one of our courses. We got some other robot stuff here, some, some Legos, Lego robotics kits that the students use for the robotics course, and some PLCs. Speaking of which, we've got all these other PLCs right here donated from Honeywell um, last year, I think. A whole bunch of analog input, analog output, digital inputs, digital outputs, all kinds of stuff here. Mostly PLCs, a few other things like this chart recorder. Really no intention to actually use it. It's more just for display for the students to show them that these things exist. And... Um, Got no idea if we plan to use any of these control panels or not. Maybe they'll come in handy. And then there are all these Honeywell sensors down here that they use in big business and big industry. Huge industrial scale stuff. Pressure sensors or fluid valve actuators or something like that. And a bunch of other things we got here from Honeywell. Just look at these ginormous contraptions. In this cabinet we got more computer networking stuff here. Like right down there is where we keep all the switches and stuff and some other microprocessor stuff. And this is another something I should have gotten rid of a long time ago because they don't work. Or at least I did have one of my student assistants hook these things up and try to see if he could get something going with them. But they're really not very useful anymore. There's a lot of things wrong with them. And what they are is a bunch of feedback. The brand name is Feedback. And these are just a bunch of analog control system components with, with uh, synchros and and motors with speedometers, or uh, not speedometers, tachometers. And we got all these pots up here. Nice, very nice precision pots for sensing position. And some of these things would have an aluminum disc on there for a mechanical load. We got these magnets here, so the magnet would go on the side of it like that and cause some physical braking to provide mechanical load on there. In this nice wooden cabinet we have Comdyna GP6 analog computers. Again, haven't been used in a long time. I used them actually when I was an undergrad in 2003 or 2004. I actually used these for the control systems course. Not so much anymore, it's just a bunch of simulation on computer nowadays that the students do, but back in the day, this is what we used, GP6 analog computers, and I'm sorry to say I'll have to get rid of these too, because they're just taking up too much space. I'll keep one or two for posterity, but you can see how nicely built they are on the inside. All those different color connectors, and individual circuit boards here. Very, very modular design. Some of them have LEDs and some of them, like this one, have a neon digital display. And we got these multi-turn pots right here for setting voltages. Very interesting design how they have the little shaft in the middle. That's what I'm spinning. And then it acts on the ball bearings there on the side to rotate the the brush going on the resistive carbon film that's inside there. Anyway, even so, these things were, were notoriously difficult to work with. A lot of bad connections, always breaking down, always needed to replace some of those circuit boards in there. Even I had to service some of them when I was working as a lab assistant here back in my undergrad. We got some Texas Instruments DSP boards here, some Tektronix 
1240 logic analyzers. Believe it or not, these things have a touch screen on here. You can see it does have a menu operation, but there's no buttons on the side like you see in other equipment. It's, it's full touch screen capability. Cable rack, of course. This one fully custom built. The base is a bunch of big, heavy 8 Henry inductors on a piece of wood. And then it's all just two by fours and plywood. One of our teachers likes to call these things little R2D2s because of how they, they roll around on the, on the cart down here. And speaking of logic analyzer, we've got this cabinet right here, which I usually keep, always keep it locked because of what's inside. Brand new Tektronix TLA 6401 logic analyzers, two of them with all the probes and manuals and support equipment. We got some older logic analyzer stuff up here for those things over there, the, uh, the other Tektronix 1240s, and a bunch of fluke, or yeah, these are fluke frequency counters. But we do have four more of these babies on order, and we should be getting them sometime this summer. So then we can have some really, a really nice set of high quality logic analyzers that we can use for one of our courses. Also, another little fun thing to point out is this right here. This is a neon sign transformer that I accidentally destroyed years ago working on my Tesla coil stuff because I put too much of a capacitive load on it. But anyway, I decided rather than just tossing it out, I would use it as a base, big heavy base for pencil sharpener. And the whole reason for that is because the pencil sharpener used to be mounted right here on the ledge before this gray plastic was installed and before these new windows were installed. Every classroom had a nice pencil sharpener on there, but they took that down and never, never put any pencil sharpeners back. So that's why I've opted for a more mobile option for any pencil sharpeners that I keep in my lab rooms. Another something I thought I should point out is this EPC rectilinear plant, which we use for one of our control systems courses. And you can see it's got this motor right here driving a, a gear, and then that that moves these two mass carts back and forth with variable masses. It doesn't move now because I got the, the limit switches and the stops closed up on either side of it, so it doesn't move when it's in storage. And uh, But each one of those has an optical encoder for sensing the position. And of course springs, there's other different springs available with different um, K constants, different spring constants on there. And also a, uh, a pneumatic damper with, over here you can adjust the amount of dampingness. And of course documentation and control box for hooking up to a computer. And then there's this big rat's nest of wires here hanging down from the ceiling tiles hooked up to this panel right here. And this is just for a bunch of antennas that we have up on the, the rooftop. Antennas that used to be used for a communications course years ago, but the teacher who taught that course has long since retired and the antennas that are up there are long since rusted away, or at least they are rusting in very poor condition. And um, so we're going to be tearing those antennas down pretty soon and replacing them with some nice newer antennas that the amateur radio club can use and hook up all their awesome stuff in these boxes. And finally, we've got all this stuff, all these cardboard boxes stuffed back here in the corner. This will be another video. This is a bunch of junk, awesome junk I should say, that we got donated from a company who, uh, what can I say, they just donated a bunch of stuff, mostly power resistors, these huge power resistors. I got some even huger power resistors in these boxes. Power supplies, pick programmers, 
fans. I don't know what the hell we're going to do with all these fans and other stuff in here. But I'm sure we can find a place and a use for a lot of this stuff at least. Anyway, I've already peeked in some of these boxes and let me tell you, there's some awesome stuff in there. You got to see it. So that's it for the control automation and robotics laboratory and we do some digital labs in here too. When we move to the new building, all these PLCs will have a place for them to be used. The control systems teacher wants to use them for teaching students PLCs and the control systems course. So thanks for watching. I will have more videos of more lab rooms to come. Bye. And finally, here's some before and after photos, some pictures I took in 2005 and some other ones I just took yesterday in 2014, taken from the same location and the same direction and under very similar lighting conditions too. So you can have a clearer picture of the before and after of what this room has looked like over the past nine years.